back to uh, back to the home there in Florida. Coming from uh, Cottage Grove, Wisconsin, up by uh, Madison. It's a Sunday morning uh, at seven or seven twenty-four a.m.
said, it being cold, pretty nice, uh, pretty nice weather out today. Not a cloud in the sky. I'm from Florida. 45 degrees is cold. <laughs>
place right there, baby.
especially on like busy roads like this, gives uh, gives us truckers time to kind of break a little bit, you know.
probably can't see that on the camera, but still, yeah, it's, uh, they're proud of the name of that town, I guess.
And as long as you know the risk, it's not so bad. It's, uh, you can deal with it. As long as you I always say, as long as you understand what the risk is, then, you know, you know what not to do. <laughs> I have to drive a lot, a lot more safety conscious than, uh, most of the people out here on the road. You know, some of the truck drivers with their uh, frozen food products or their big screen TVs or something, uh, they'll be uh, they'll be driving all over the road and uh, ex excessive speed. You know, this this truck runs about 65 miles an hour, and that's as fast as she goes. So. Uh, Some of these guys will run 80, 90 miles an hour down the road. And, you know, they're just asking for it one day. Uh, but you know, as long as it's not me, keep on going. You keep doing your thing, and I'll just keep doing mine. I kind of wish that people had a, a little bit more of a uh, understanding of how to drive around trucks a little safer though, especially ones that have a big sign on the side of it that shows it's flammable, you know, because this stuff is extremely flammable, and, uh, you know, if you, uh, if you puncture my discharge valves or, uh, you know, puncture the, uh, you can't puncture the, you really can't puncture the side of the trailer. These trailers are real thick walls, steel walls uh, inside and they're real thick and uh, I've heard stories about how people have rolled these tanks over like four or five times and and, and it was still intact so <laughs> the product was still in the trailer um, but if somebody hits the back of me where my discharge valves are at I can't guarantee what would happen there and you know if your car's running if you hit me and your car's still running, you're producing a spark in your uh, spark plugs, and that spark can ignite the, the product, and kaboom. Uh, knock on wood, I've never had anything like that happen to me, but I've seen news footage, stories of big tanker explosions in different places and stuff, and, you know. A lot of it was due to negligence on the other people's part, you know, because they just don't pay attention. And it's kind of sad. But, you know, you get yourself killed pretty quick. People die out here all the time on the road. I just soon get to where I want to go, and I just assume everybody else get, get where they want to go, too. But, you know, if somebody wants to drive like an idiot, Sorry. Right. You know, if it's not my fault and I didn't do anything about it, sorry, sorry for uh, worrying, but you know, shouldn't have been driving like that. <laughs> you know, it's a decision that will cost you your life eventually. Some of these people out here that just drive. 110, 120 miles an hour thinking they're indestructible. Your time's a coming, partner. I mean, you know, you may, some people just assume, but, you know, your time's a coming. Just don't kill nobody else in the process. That's all I ask. Don't kill some innocent people in the process. If you're going to do something stupid and take your own life, well, whatever, but don't, uh, don't hurt other people. Uh, they didn't ask for that, you know. I'm a strong advocate against people driving drunk because of that same that same principle, you know. If you can't if you can't figure out how to take an Uber or a taxi back home from wherever you're drinking at, then you probably don't need to be drinking. Just saying. I like a beer as much as the next guy, but I don't I don't get in a car and drive around 
deep braided neuter. So, a little word of wisdom from the old truck driver. Be safe. <laughs> Remember, your destination will be there when you get there, even if you got to drive five or ten miles an hour slower. Remember that it will be there when you get there. I promise that building will still be there. So, unless you are a fireman or a police officer or something, then you need to back off. <laughs> you know, uh, back off the accelerator a little bit and enjoy the ride. But, if you look in some of my other videos, today's not really a good example of that because there's not a lot of people out here, but look at some of my other my other videos that I've shot you'll see people just get in such a big hurry out here and there ain't no point in that not a little trick here in Tupelo if you're going southbound on 45 you want to get in this left hand lane because that right lane will end here in about a mile and a half People will, people will sit and ride that ride lane and not know no better. Or they just get in too big of a hurry. Like, I mean, speed limit's 55 right here. I'm going about 58 right now. 57. There's a big old curve up here. It's a 40 mile an hour curve. I gotta take that thing right at about 40 miles an hour. It's a pretty hairy one. I had that one there. I'm sure they have a lot of accidents right there. Your eyes are panning constantly because 
you know, you stress yourself out more driving like that than if you would just do the speed limit. You don't have to worry, I don't have to worry about getting pulled over by a cop because I don't have to worry about getting a ticket because I do what I'm supposed to do, you know. deadline too. I hear that argument too. Well, I've got places i got to go. I'm on a deadline. Well, you know, your deadline, you should have got going a little bit earlier if you've got a deadline like that. Just saying. I make my deadlines just fine. And you see how I'm doing it. First, everything else is last, as far as I'm concerned. Thumb sticking out, you know. 
Uh, they just soon walk, I guess. You don't see a whole lot of that anymore. kind of turned me sour, I guess, on a lot of things. But I've seen some real bad parts of, of society and, you know, just all the places that I've gone to. You know, I've, I've traveled uh, over, over two million miles in my life. And I've seen, I've seen some of the downright dirtiest parts of of humanity and it's just you know it's kind of turned me sour a little bit you know I don't have a lot of faith in humanity anymore I try to keep my faith in God and you know humanity I don't know miles of this right here well eh, minus about 60 because uh, you get to Mobile and it kind of changes a little bit but you know pretty much this right here is what I'll be staring at for the next five and a half hours so I'm not going to bore everybody with that but anyway I just wanted to take a chance to kind of introduce myself and I haven't really done that in any of my other videos so um, thought I'd kind of make this an introductory video for myself and kind of give you guys a background on me. Uh, I also have uh, uh, some of my extra little hobbies. I'm a ham radio operator. I really enjoy uh, uh, communication, amateur radio communication, and um, I carry. I've got a uh, ham radio set up here in the truck with me. Uh, you might hear that from time to time on my videos. I'll turn it on just to kind of, I don't know, just keep the silence down, you know. Uh, I like to have something to listen to during the day. But uh, anyway, uh, I also have uh, a bachelor's and an associate's degree in renewable energy technology. Uh, I spent seven years at Arkansas State University studying for a degree that I ended up never using. So, never could find work in it that paid anywhere decent. So, I was very disappointed with that. But, yeah, well, at least I've got a good paying job. It could be worse. I could be out digging ditches somewhere. So, uh, <laughs> I don't. I'm in an air-conditioned cab all day long in the in the summer, in a heated cab in the winter time. I guess I can't complain too much. Um, I do kind of miss my family back home. I'm married. I have uh, three little kids, ages 10, 8, and 6. And, uh, I know my family misses me, and I miss them 10 times more than they miss me. But, you know, got to put bread on the table, you know. Everything I do is for my family, and I kind of think that's the way uh, the world should work, you know. See, you settle down, you start a family, and you do what you have to do legally. You do what you have to do to support your family. You don't sit on your, sit on your behind and do nothing and play video games all day and, you know, you get out and you work. Work hard. That's what America is all about. This country was built on hard-working people like what I do. Not meaning to toot my own horn or anything, but there's there's hundreds of thousands of us just like me doing this same job. And all we're doing is trying to earn a living for our families. And I believe that is what makes, that's the bread and butter of America, in my opinion. It's uh, hard work and dedication and uh, 
making sure your family goes doesn't go without even if I have to a couple of nights you know my family doesn't and I'm okay with that anyway great to uh, have you along I hope y'all enjoy these videos I don't post a whole lot of them anymore I kind of don't really ever hardly see anything that people might be interested in this included so <laughs> you know but uh I just thought I'd take a chance to kind of introduce myself to so anyway I gotta slow down just a little bit here I always give police officers a lot of room because if he's got to flip on his lights or something and get to something he's got to get to uh, I don't want to hold him up you know what I mean so I don't want to be in his way at all so anyway y'all have a great rest of the day and we'll look for you on the next uh, video